Lord, I'm so glad that you came to the show. Amen. Can I come to you this morning? Church tell me I'm a nervous wreck this morning. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I've preached messages before and I've tried to find my best to follow the Lord. Yeah. But he gave me a different Easter message this morning. Bless the Lord. And I've talked to Molly about it every day. I go study and I, I've had the scripture for a long time. And I started talking to Molly. I said, Molly, pray for me. It's going to be all right. <laughs> I said, Molly, pray for me. You don't understand. She said, it's going to be all right. Yeah. And I'm thinking, now, you know, and I've told the church before, I'm not a traditionalist. But if it's the Lord's willing today, I'm going to preach on this. The seed that changed the world. Uh -huh. The seed that changed the world. Come on. Better listen to me this morning. Without that seed, the world wouldn't be changed the way it is oh, today. Come on. Yeah. Amen. We're going to talk about a seed today. If you got your Bibles, go over into the book of John. <clears throat> Crystal, would you run and get me some more? John chapter 12. I'm going to, got a few verses to read. Just go with me today. Just bear with me just a little bit this morning. We don't have, we're not having an Easter night service, so you'll be able to go home and rest. Just listen to the word of God this morning, please. Oh, yeah. I challenge you to listen tonight. I'm, I'm really praying and I'm really asking God to show me what He wanted me to have. And, and so if you got your Bibles, go to the book John chapter John chapter 12. And you stand and we're going to read God's word again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. John chapter 12. We've got a lot of readings, so just take your time this morning. Just listen to me. Remember, I told you last Sunday, last Sunday was Palm Sunday. But the Lord had me preach on something else, and I told you I would cover about the entry. Because Palm Sunday, there's a lot to Palm Sunday that goes with the seed. You've got to understand it all ties together. Mm hmm. This has got to happen before that's got to happen. And that's got to happen before the next thing's got to happen. So there's things that's got to happen. Verse 12, chapter 12 of the verse of John. On the next day, people who were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass sitting there on as it was written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, the king cometh sitting on ass coat. These things understand not his disciples at first. But when Jesus was going to listen to me, when Jesus was glorified, uh -huh. You might want to underline that word glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Excuse me, let's go back. I messed up. Verse 16. But when Jesus was glorified, then remember they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, who was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they had heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceived ye how he prevailed nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. Mm -hmm. And there were certain Greeks among them who came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was a Bethia, of Galilee and desired him saying sir we would see Jesus mm -hmm. Philip came and told Andrew and again Andrew 
Philip tells Jesus. And Jesus answered him saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. There's that word glorified. Uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, listen to this right here. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and dies. Yes. Uh -huh. Understand that right there. Yes. It's got to die yeah. first. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because if it don't die, there ain't no resurrection. No. Mm. Right, amen. It abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Yeah. He who loves his life shall lose it, and he who hates his life in this world shall keep it to life eternal. Uh -huh. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. Uh -huh. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Yeah. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto the hour. Mm -hmm. Or you listen to verse 28. Two things happen in this verse right here. Father, glorify your name. Then Jesus, excuse me, then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Again. Amen. You won't shout. You won't shout. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But it glorifies what? Uh -huh. <coughs> then he's got to glorify again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when that second glorify comes, we got victory. And I'll explain all of this here in a minute. Amen. Got to understand that. Uh huh. Something happened a while back, but that second glorify <coughs> is the key to the whole thing. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for giving the blessing. Father God, I pray, God, that heaven will come down in glory with your soul. Father God, I ask you to anoint my lips of clay. God, I need you today, Lord. God, anoint me, God. Let me, God, see what you have to do. God, let the words come out of my mouth, God. That will benefit these people today, God. Lord, help me, God, to seek you first, the kingdom of God. Holy Ghost, we ask you to walk up and down the avenues in this house today. God, we ask you to touch each one listening in here and out there across the God, adorn, uh, ordain this word today. God, anoint this message. God, let it go out and touch our hearts and our minds so we can receive you, God. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to start a week ago to bring this to message. I don't want to leave anything out. I want to go back a week from today. I want to go back and explain to you why they have what they call Palm Sunday. I want to go back and explain to you just a little bit of what's taking place here. Before we had Palm Sunday, Jesus performed a miracle. Uh -huh. He went and he raised Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. That's very important. Uh -huh. Because Jesus had performed a miracle. And when he performed that miracle, all the people that was around the, the Sanhedrin courts was mad. Because if you look in the scriptures, hallelujah, all the people that seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead was turning from the religious to leaders and looking to Jesus for everything uh -huh. that they need. Can I tell you today, church, we need to turn from uh -huh. the, the religious aspect of it and serve an almighty God uh -huh. that we never serve the Lord. Amen, boy. Bring it down. I'll tell you how mad the Sanhedrin court was. If you look in the scriptures, you know, everybody knows that they was going after Jesus. Uh -huh. Can I tell you there was another they want to crucify to? Uh -huh. And his name was Lazarus. Uh -huh. They wanted him because God and Jesus had performed a miracle on him. Yeah. 
He wanted him dead also so the people could come back and, and go and start serving the, the courts and following after man instead of following after Jesus. Uh -huh. So now we get to last week. If you noticed, and I don't know if the people understood what they were doing when they stood and they took the palm leaves and they were waving it up and down and Jesus was coming through the city. But when I say it, they don't know if they understand it. Listen to what they said. Hosanna. Uh -huh. Hosanna. Yeah. I want to understand what the word Hosanna means in two different languages. The word Hosanna, if you look it up, in the Arabic, it means God save or God help. Yeah. But if you look in the in the Hebrew, the word means save, we pray. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they understood when they were standing there waving, they was asking Jesus to help them. Uh -huh. How many times in our life uh, have we had to wave the palm uh, and on. say, Jesus, help me. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, help me. Yeah. Jesus, help me. How many times uh, uh -huh. in our lives have we had to cry out to God and say, yeah. God, would you please help me? Amen. Amen. Would you help me, please? Uh -huh. I don't. I mean, I, I tried studying it out, but they never really, it never says in the uh, in the Arabic or the Hebrew whether they really understood uh, what they were trying to say to Jesus when they were saying, "Jesus, help me." Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. Help me, Lord. But what you got to understand, something had to happen to Jesus uh -huh. before He could help them. Amen. Something had to happen to Him. Before he can help them. Because mm -hmm. if you read it all, if you go, if you really break down the scripture, in this passage of scripture, when the leaders of the court got mad because the people were worshiping Jesus and not worshiping him. Uh -huh. Can I tell you something? When you start truly serving an Almighty God, come on, and you start worshiping God, uh -huh. you're going to make the enemy mad, yeah, because you're taking the glory away from them Amen. and you're putting it on Jesus, yeah, which matters. I learned a lot this week studying this passage of Scripture that I, that I don't want to get ahead of myself. I got to slow down. Just let me slow down. Just a little bit. Bobby said, just calm down. <laughs> but I want to get to a point here. We understand because when Jesus left that Palm Sunday, a lot of things happened from Palm Sunday. <coughs> yeah. A lot of things happened. Uh -huh. And I don't have enough time in the day to explain to you what happened on Monday, what happened on Tuesday, what happened on Wednesday. I don't have enough time to explain. But I can tell you this. Hallelujah, glory to God. When they took him before the, the courts and they took him before Pilate and they took Come him before on. all the leaders. Uh-huh. When they took him to the before the king, the king was upset. He was he was troubled because I find no cause in this man. Uh -huh. I find no guilt in this man. No. So he took him before the people. Uh -huh. And said, "Choose who you're going to who's going to die, and who you're going to let go." Yeah. The murderer they let go. Yeah. But the king they kept. Uh huh. The king they kept. So what did the king, the ruler, do? He went and he washed his hands. Yeah. I'm washing my hands of it. Yeah. Sometimes in our walk with God, 
we got to wash your hands. Yeah. Sometimes in our walk with God, we got to wash your hands from the things that are behind us uh -huh. and keep going forward. Amen. Sometimes we got to let things go yeah. and we're gonna wash your hands yeah. so things can happen in our walk with God. Amen. Sometimes we got to wash your hands. Uh -huh. Now, let's go down to verse 20. you got to understand something. As I was reading this scripture, I found it amusing. But if you look at verse 20, it said that there was a certain Greek who among them who came up to worship at the feast. That should have never happened. Because at the time, the only ones who should be going to Jesus was the Jews. But there was a certain amount of people that hid because they know something about Jesus and they wanted what he had. Yeah. Ain't you glad today that you don't gonna have to hide <laughs> to get to Jesus? Amen. Ain't you glad that you don't have to, to put on a front or put on a mask just so you can come in and worship God? Amen. Ain't you glad that you can just go and talk to the Father like anybody else, like you're talking to anybody else? Yes. Ain't you glad you don't have to put on a front because the Greeks there said, I, I know what he can do. I just want to get to where he's at. Amen. That's where the church needs to be today. Yeah. I need to get as close to him as I can. Right. I need to get to him with everything that I've got. Yes. I need to quit worrying about this and worrying about that. And Lord, I, I need to get to you. Amen. 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 Go down to verse 23 now. And Jesus answered them saying, talking to his disciples, Saying the hour is come. Yes. What is he saying when he says the hour is come? He's told him before that he's going to be go through suffering, but they uh -huh. have They told him before. He's told him before of everything that's going to happen. Yeah. But they don't remember. How many uh -huh. times has God told us things up? over and over again and somehow when something comes up, I don't remember what you said, Lord, and God yeah. has to tell you again. Come on. How many times do we have to cry out to God, I know you told me, Lord, but I forgot. Uh -huh. Come on. No, you ain't forgot, you just don't want to do it. That's right. Come on. I'm keeping my hand raised because I'm, getting, I'm preaching to me. Come on, Pastor, come on. Because listen to me, the time is drawing near. Uh -huh. Because listen, Jesus answered him saying, the hour is come. Yeah. What does he mean? The hour is coming, my suffering. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because listen to me, something's got to happen in, in the temple for all of this to take place. And I, uh -huh. I, I'm just... Can I tell you there was two veils? Uh huh. Now listen to me. There were two veils in the temple. Uh huh. When you first walked into the holy place, not the holy of holies, the holy place, there was a veil. Yeah. Then there was an empty space. Uh huh. <laughs> then there was another veil. Yeah. To get to the holies of holies. Uh -huh. The veil was 60 feet high. It covered from the roof to the floor. Uh -huh. Listen to me. Come on. Some places in the veil was up to 27 inches thick. Uh -huh. 27 inches thick. Well, preacher, why is that important? Because until the void in the middle got fixed, we have no access to go. Uh -uh. 
Come on. To the Holy of Holies. That's right. Jesus had to do something to fix the void yeah. between the holy place and the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Something had to happen between the first veil and the second veil. Uh -huh. Now this is where the seed's going to come in. Listen to me. That the Son of Man should be glorified. We're still in 23. This, this statement right here guarantees a resurrection. Uh -huh. You better highlight that. That guarantees the resurrection's got to happen. Uh -huh. That guarantees that something is going to happen at the end of this verse. Yeah. Something. That's the first guarantee that something's got to take place. Come on. Because he has nothing to suffer. There's got to be something to happen in between. Verse 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, now listen, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. I just want to stop right there. In case you don't understand, <coughs> Jesus is talking about him. Uh huh. I want you to listen to, to why it's so important for things to happen. Jesus is comparing himself to a grain of wheat. Yeah. Isaiah 53 and 2 says this, For he shall grow up before him at the tender plant. Uh -huh. And as a root out of dry ground, he, he was unformed nor comeless. When we shall see him, there should be no beauty that we should desire him. Huh? The grain and the seed wants to do something. Huh? And if it don't do something, nothing can happen in our lives. That's right. So what do you mean, preacher? Jesus, it was his destiny. Listen to me. It was his destiny to die. Uh -huh. You understand me? It was his destiny that he dies. Yeah. How many has a garden? I see one, two, three. What are you looking for when you have a garden? It ain't looking, it ain't when the, you plant the seed, but down the road you want to see something come out of the seed. Oh, yeah. Okay, listen to me. Jesus is the seed. Yes, he is. Listen to me. They planted him in the ground, they put him in the tomb. Uh huh. Listen to me. When they put him in the tomb, he had to die. But you yeah. listen to me very carefully. They did not kill him. No. no. You got to understand something. If they killed him, it would change him. Yeah. He had to give it up yeah. for it to happen. Amen. Uh -huh. That the old preacher, they stabbed him with the sword in the side and out came the blood and the water. Yes. But that didn't kill him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The nails in his arms and his feet didn't kill him. No. When he says, Father, forgive them, for I know not what they do. And when he gave up the ghost, he freely gave up for me and you. Amen. Amen. He freely gave it up. They didn't kill him. And you'll hear people say, Oh, they did. No, they didn't. No. No. It wasn't a word that they killed him. But he gave it up. Listen, he could have called 10,000 angels. But he had to mm -hmm. <coughs> go back to the garden. In the garden, 
He cried out to his father. Father, if it's your will, remove this cup from me. Yeah. Lord, take this cup from me. Uh -huh. And he goes back and the disciples are sleeping. The church for today is sleeping here. When Jesus says, can you not pray an hour? Uh -huh. Come on, Pastor, preach. Uh -huh. Preach. But he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus came here for one reason. So we can have life everlasting. Amen. He came for one reason to die and resurrect so we can have hope. Amen. Yeah. You sow the seed into the ground so it can it can decompose in the ground so it can die in the ground. It has to die for something to come up. The seed has to die for something to happen in our own life. Something's got to die for it to can come up out of us. Amen. Yes. Have to die. Yes. Listen to me this morning. In the process of him dying, he was also working. Uh huh. You better listen to me. Come on. When he's in that tomb, when they said he was dying dead. All he was doing was being about the father's business. Yes, it is. Now listen to me, son. He went down to hell. Uh huh. Sure did. I can just see him knocking on the door of hell. Yeah. He says, "I come for something." Yeah. I come for the keys. Yeah. yeah. Better understand what I'm doing. He says, I'm done. You may say that I'm dead. Oh, I might be dead, but they're on the outside. But on yeah. the inside, something's happening in the ground. Oh. In the ground, something is taking place. Oh. In the ground, I'm about to fall this bit. I'm yeah. coming, I need them keys. Oh. You have all to a the of yeah. I need to take care of death, hell, and the bread. I need to talk to all of my people. We'll have something to look forward to. Preach. Preach, Pastor. Come on. He was on a mission. Mm -hmm. He was on a mission. Yeah. He was on a mission from his father. Uh huh. I need the keys. I was doing some praying this week and studying this week. And I. Listen to me this morning. If Satan would have realized what, what was going to happen, uh -huh. he would. Now I can show you in the Bible. I'm going to add in this. If he would have known when he crucified Christ what was going to happen, he would have never done it. I am. I am. You better listen to me. The people said, oh, the devil, man, oh, the devil didn't make you do it. You did it yourself and you blamed it on the devil. Amen. Come on. The devil don't make you do half the things that you do. You do it because you're in the out of nature. Yeah. But Jesus took care of the out of nature too. And you would just listen to him. Amen. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. He conquered death, hell. And the last thing he conquered was the grave. Uh -huh. A young man talked to a young man yesterday and he was talking about how for a long time in his life that he was always afraid of what's going to happen when he dies. Mm -hmm. And I said, son, you don't have to. He says, I don't anymore. He says, I started studying and looking in the word and realized that 
And when Jesus rose from the dead, yeah. I don't have to be worried about right, death right. anymore because, uh, hallelujah, uh, uh, he made the way. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to sleep and wake up on the other side. Uh, yeah. I ain't worried about what's going to happen because if I know that my name is written down in the land, hey, I, I know who my God is, uh, and I know who I'm going to spend eternity. You don't have to worry anymore. Right, The seed's got to just compromise into the ground. It's got to die. Uh -huh. For something to come up, it's got to die. And I already covered and told you that he didn't, they didn't kill him, but he did it himself. You plant something in the ground, you plant that seed in the ground. Do you have to work it? Do you have to work that seed? Oh, yeah. You know, it's a miracle how you put the water on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all missed it right there. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Ghost puts the water on the seed. Yeah. Come on. And the nutrition in the work, in the ground starts building on that. Yeah. Because see, it's got to die uh -huh. to resurrect. Yeah. What happens when it dies? The old shell on the outside falls off. Yeah. So something new on the inside can raise up and say, uh -huh. Oh, listen to me. The old man died when Jesus said yeah. he was finished. And when he came anymore. back up, something new yeah. had to rise up out of the ground. That new seed had to come up. Yeah. It wasn't the same old sin anymore. No. Oh, yeah. It was something because the old man died. Uh -huh. But the new Jesus rose up again. Amen. 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 Got to add the water and the nutrition in the earth. It creates the life of the seed. After a little while, when you plant something, Something's got to happen. Uh huh. You ever been walking through your garden and you look down and all of a sudden you see something? It looks like, hey, it's green. Uh huh. I see it. I see something fixing to burst out. Yeah. Man. On that third day that Jesus had already told him I'm coming back. Yeah. yeah. So the Sanhedrin, they put out some soldiers. You guard this. Uh-huh. Because oh, yeah. I, I don't really want that seed to come out of the ground. Uh-huh. Because when that seed comes out of the ground, he's going to have victory. Yeah. When that seed comes up out of the ground, uh -huh. something's going to happen. Uh -huh. When that seed comes up out of the ground, we ain't going to be able to, to control him anymore. Uh -huh. When that seed comes out of the ground, he's going to give him power. Uh -huh. When that seed comes up out of the ground, something's going to happen. Uh -huh. <laughs> because when that grain or, or that seed produces life, He can spread to other plants. If you will. Yeah. If you will. When life comes in that thing, in that seed, something can spread from one plant to the other. Yeah. Just like when Jesus plants that seed inside of you, and it comes out. Hallelujah, glory to God. And you can perform and breast to breast. You can fellowship. Yeah. Amen. As well. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We're going down to verse twenty-seven. Excuse me, verse twenty-six. I'm sorry. No, I'm right. Twenty-seven. <laughs> now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But 
For this hour came I. For this call, excuse me, I came to this hour. He realized that I'm here for a reason. Uh -huh. He realized that if I don't do what I came for, the people won't be set free. That's right. right. And you've got to understand something. You go down to that next verse. <laughs> Father, glorify your name. Then came a voice out of heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Uh -huh. Okay, the first time he could, in that verse right there, <laughs> when he said he glorified it, mm -hmm. what is he talking about? Remember back in Matthew, over in Matthew chapter, I believe it's chapter 4, verse 1 through 7, 11. Jesus had just fasted 40 days. Uh huh. And Satan took and tempted him. Yeah. After he was fasting for 40 days. But did Jesus give in? Nope. Yeah, no. No. No, he didn't. He defeated Satan right there. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And how did he defeat him? Word. You hit the word at him. Yeah. Every question that Satan asked him, he hit him with the word. Yeah. Listen to me this morning, church. When the enemy comes at you, if you open up your Bible and learn what the word says, and you hit him back with the word, he ain't going to lie. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got to hit him back with the word. Yeah. I want to stop right there just a minute. Oh. Would you go back to the bell? Because I can't take you back to the last one until I take you back to the bell. You got the bell, and right when you walked into the holy place, there was a bell. Uh -huh. Go back and say it again, and right at the right before you go into the holies of holies, there was a bell. Uh -huh. The only one that was loud past that second bell was a priest. Yeah. Once a year, they were allowed to go in to the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Once a year, they had to make sure whoever went in was pure. Yeah. Was holy. Uh -huh. To the point that they tied a rope around him with a bell on it. And if they didn't hear the bell, they couldn't run in and rescue him. Uh -huh. They would drag him out. Yeah. The you know, holy of holy. Yeah. The preacher, you keep talking about this empty space right here. In the middle of these two veils. Why can't we go into the holies of holies? Because we can't get to number one. Number most of you can't get past the first veil to get to the, to the emptiness. Uh -uh. The gap between the first veil and the second veil represents the Jews and the Greeks and the Gentiles. Uh -huh. They had to be some way for them to come together to worship an almighty God. Yeah. They had to be a way that I could get from point A to point C, which is the holy is the holy. Jesus had to do something to get that sinner out of the way so we could all come together and worship him. And the Bible says in Hebrew, to come to the throne room with great boldness. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. Something had to happen. Because there was only a select few that could go in uh -huh. and see the king. See the holy of holies. Yeah. But when he said the second time, and will glorify it again. Mm -hmm. Listen to me just a second. We're almost through. Listen to me. He sprung up out of that seed. The stone, they listened. 
the stone was pushed away. Yeah. When the stone was pushed away, you notice they put the guards outside the door. Uh -huh. And the guards, when they found them, they were asleep. Uh -huh. But when the city rose up out of the ground, and the anointing hit the, hit the rose or hit the plant. And when the anointing hit Jesus, and when he stepped out of that tomb, how with a new body, the old one died in the ground and the new Jesus rose up. And when he rose up, glory to God, he covered with the authority. They crucified him the first time. They killed him, they said, the first time. But the next time he comes, they're not going to do that anymore. He's coming back with power. Yeah. And the vengeance. He's coming back. It's a lion of Judah. There's no much. Jesus. And when he said on the cross, it is finished. Uh -huh. In the temple, the two veils split in the yes. middle. Yes. All the way down. Yes. Uh -huh. So me and you yeah. we have access. Yes. Uh -huh. Come on. There is no stuff in the way anymore. Come on. There is nothing in the way anymore. I can't believe I'm going. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah. Because when the seed starts growing inside of you, it changes you. Yes, it it makes you a different person. Uh -huh. You don't want to talk like you used to talk. You don't want to walk the way you used to walk. You don't want to act the way you used to act. When that new seed starts taking over you, and putting something down inside of you, that changes you from that yeah. today, then he can still do it to you today. Amen. Amen. The saddest thing about it is people are rejecting that seed every day. Uh -huh. They're rejecting it because, hey, I'm more, I'm more important to the things of this world than I am to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But listen, this week, and I've been really praying, I'll be telling you, I've really been praying and seeking God on a lot of things. I'm going to come to the close of this. If the seed is planted in you like it should be, you won't listen to the lie of the devil. That's you right. better listen to what I'm just saying. Right. Come on. You better listen to what I'm telling you. 
If that seed is inside of you planted, quit listening to the lies that the devil's trying to tell you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You better listen to me again. Don't listen to the lies that the devil is trying to put in your thought. Right. Amen. Because every time you believe a lie, I'm going to just bring this out. This is what the Lord wants to know about the burden. You ever know somebody that's really arrogant? Mm -hmm. The things that, man, when you puff them up, they think they're the best person in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what? The devil's the same way. Yeah. When he starts putting thoughts and lies in your, in your mind, and you say, you're right. Instead of coming back with the word, yes, sir. you're believing the lie. Uh -huh. You're not believing the truth. Uh -huh. The problem is you ain't got enough this in here inside of you to determine whether it's from God or it's a lie. Hey, man. Hey, man. Better listen. Mm -hmm. One of these days I might teach on that. God's really been dealing with me. You stand with me today. Folks, this is everything I'm telling you. I've never understood how God's do it, that God is really putting messages in my spirit that I can't explain it. I ain't going to try to. But you listen to me this morning. You ain't here by accident. God had you here for a reason. Yeah. Because God loves you and God cares for you. Yes, he does. God wants the best for you. Yes. People that tell you, oh, God ain't for me. Let me tell you something. He's for everybody. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes. Quit believing that lie. Uh huh. God is for everybody. Yes. Whoever needs to never head back, never eye closed. Please, no one look around. Just give me a few more minutes. You'll be all right. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. And listen to me very carefully. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more that lies are going to come at you oh, yes. to deter you from doing what God called you to do, oh, yes. what God wanted you to do. Amen. But if you listen today, if you're here today, never head bowed, never eye closed, I ain't going to come back and I ain't going to do anything but pray for you. But if you're here today and you say, Preacher, I need prayer. Would you raise your hand and say, preacher, pray for me. Are they wanting that? I know God's dealing with me because I failed it all the way during this service. Would you swallow your pride and raise your hand and say, preacher, just pray for me. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you anyway. God bless that man. Those others in here this morning. He needs to shake, a, shake it off of you. And raise your hand and say, preacher, pray for me. Let me share something with you. You want peace at night when you lay down. You need to head to Jesus. Yes. Troubles in your life that you don't know which way to turn. You need to get to Jesus. Yes. You need to call upon Him when nobody else is around you. You've got to have a relationship with Him. Yes. With that seed. Yes. Is that another one can raise your hand this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, there's others in here. God's dealing with you. God bless that hand. Is that another? This morning that God, God's dealing with you. Oh, preacher, I'm all right. Let me share something with you. You may think you're all right. When something happens, you're going to find out how, how close you are to God. You better, you, better, you better get close as you can to God because of things that's going to happen in this world. You better trust Him. Say another this morning. We're going to get ready to pray. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father. God, I thank you for this word this morning. God, I thank you for the anointing that I feel in this house. God, I ask you right now, God, those who raised your hand, God, and those that didn't raise your hand, God, that you would move on their behalf, God. Lord, quicken their spirit, God, that they realize that the day is the day of salvation, that the day is the day that the seed could come out from them. Yes, that's Father God, I praise you and I thank you, God, for everything that you do. God, open up their hearts so they can see. God, I know this word, let it go out. Let it be ordained by you today across this earth. God, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
All right, I say one.